welcome back. So today we're actually going to be doing a look at how I paint one of my paintings. So this is a speed paint or a quick tutorial on how I did my um, circus painting. So this is a more recent painting that I've done of some clownfish in a reef and I thought I'd show you the process behind that. I do have a separate video that focuses on one of these fish in more detail. If you want to watch that one, I'll leave a link to it up in the eye cards above. All of my big detailed paintings start as a sketch, done on regular drawing paper, and then transferred over to watercolour paper. This is just so I can erase where I need to and don't have to worry about damaging the watercolour paper and get my sketch right and tight before um, moving on to painting. And now I'm just going to set up so I clean my palette. I'm now going to use some masking fluid and mask off the white areas of the fish, such as um, the white stripes on the fish, just because I'm very clumsy and I don't want to get any paint in those white areas. So into the actual painting now, I like to start off with a lot of wet and into wet techniques, just to get some really nice smooth blends and gradients. And that really starts off the foundation. I also try not to go too strongly with colour to start with, just because if I make a mistake it's easier to correct when I've got less paint on the page. And then I'll build up my layers like this, going in more light washes and then more concentrate dark ones as I build up the piece. So materials, I'm going to leave a material list down in the description bar below if you want a few run through of the materials I'm using and links on where you can get them. They will be affiliate links and if those don't know affiliate links are links that you can use that will help myself out every time you click the link and buy something from it. I get a small percentage of the sale. There's no extra cost to you, the buyer. And sometimes you might be eligible for a discount, so it's always worth checking out. So this has been painted on cold pressed paper from Saunders. It's my favorite paper that, I, paper that I've found so far. It's pretty affordable here in the UK, and it's really high quality, and it's made of cotton. And then the paints I'm using are a range of paints, actually. I usually don't have a specific brand that I'm loyal to. I think colors we have in here might be Sennelier, Windsor & Newton, Old Holland, um, maybe some Schmincke off the top of my head. I don't really have a specific brand that I use. I just use a range of brands that I find are really good, and the colors that I like. Brushes, again, I'm not too picky on brushes. I think I'm mostly using here Iskoda brushes. I think they're pretty affordable and pretty good quality. But there are, of course, other brushes on the market that are also pretty good. This painting is quite a large painting, it's done on a quarter imperial sheet of paper and for those of you who have seen my work before will know this is not my normal subject of choice so this was new to me and I really enjoyed painting it. Painting actually it was a nice challenge and something different to sink my teeth into. And it was really fun, I was really happy with the outcome at the end and it, it really pushed my boundaries to use different techniques that I'm used to. I'm not used to painting in this kind of way so it was nice and fun to do. So the fish is really starting to come to life now. We've added in the shadows and we added the black on the fins. So it's really starting to look like a clownfish now. And I'm really happy with how this is turning out. It's looking really great. I'm really surprised. <laughs> Thank you. 
so we're going to skip ahead now. I didn't record um, painting the other clownfish in the piece just because I didn't want this video to be any longer than it already is. This painting took quite a lot of hours to do paint as you can imagine. So here we are now, we've done the other clownfish in the top right corner. I actually messed this one up a little bit and I had to kind of save it with some coloured pencils because I just couldn't quite get it right. But we got there in the end and I've started on the rock down at the bottom and now we're just painting the anemone and all the little tentacles. This took a lot longer than what I thought, painting each and every tentacle, adding the shading and the texture to it was took quite a long time to do. So I'm painting these tentacles um, with a mixture of um, in damp foam blue and as well I also went over it later on in manganese blue and that worked really ni nicely, the manganese blue gave it a real pop and the damp foam blue really helped with the shadows. So I'm just painting some of the rocks here and this was a very different technique um, than I usually do. I'm actually using a stippling technique using a masking fluid brush so all the bristles are splayed and it's not very nice to paint with but it gives a really nice stippling texture and I feel like it really added some nice texture to the rock and made it pop a lot more. Um, originally I started going off in with flat washes and that just wasn't really working out. I wasn't going to get all the texture and all the colours and everything that I really wanted to get in. So I tried this method and it worked. <laughs> That's what I mean, sometimes when you're used to doing a certain subject you forget there are other kind of techniques that you can use for other styles of painting so it's really nice to break the mould and do something a little bit different. So now on to the probably scariest bit for me, which was the background. I had no idea what I was going to do with the background, I was very nervous about it. I didn't know if I was going to fill it in to a whole blue or, you know, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. So I just looked up some pictures you know, just on Google of clownfish and I saw these really nice kind of colourful backgrounds. Like there were mixtures of blues, violets, and they were very blurry and very um, sort of distorted. Obviously with the focus of the image being on the fish. So I thought, you know, I'm going to try and recapture this and try this in paint. Watercolour paint particularly wants to make these shapes and these backgrounds because it blends and bleeds so easily, which makes it look really nice, it's really suited to that kind of painting, so I thought I'd give it a go. Starting off by wetting the paper down first, just so we can allow all those colours to blend and mix together. But it's really difficult because you don't want it too wet because then all the colours will just bleed too much, so it's kind of um, getting it the right kind of dampness. And then we're going to go in with some colour and watch the magic happen. It was scary and it was daunting, but it was also really fun just to chuck a load of colours on the paper and watch them all flow and move and spread. And it's just really nice to see it taking shape and becoming something that looks kind of cool in the background. So I think I'm starting off here with PV19, which I think is quinacridone rose. And I think I'm just adding some diluted dioxine violet into it just to add some more violet to the tone. And then I'll probably add some in damp foam blue and phthalo blue in the backgrounds just to really bring the blue through. It reminds me of that time that I did some abstract painting a few years ago and it's really fun to do just to kind of be free and flowing and just have fun with it.
this was also an equally challenging bit getting all the colour around all the little tentacles and all the little shapes and having it blend in with the main um, sort of background if I didn't do this while it was all still wet I'd have had some really hard lines and edges which I didn't want so I had to work very quickly and very carefully so yeah it was definitely a challenge to do and then once it was all dry I did a couple more passes I deepened the colours deepened the blues added more pinks just to really make it pop and add some more intense colour into it So I'm just going to finish off the painting now, add the last little bits, add some more details, darken around the tentacles a little bit, and just sort of bring it all together. Um, so I have really enjoyed how this has turned out, and I've really enjoyed painting it, and it was a really nice challenge to do, and it was really refreshing to do as well compared to all the botanical stuff that I normally do. I actually like this one that much that I'm considering doing a limited run of prints on it. Um, let me know what you guys think down in the comments if you think I should do some prints of this one and would you be interested in buying it and what size would you like it? I mean this has been done on Quarter Imperial which is roughly A3 size if you're in the UK so I could do the A3 prints, A4 which is like a standard sort of sheet to paper sort of size or A5 size which is sort of um, I think it's twice the size of a postcard, roughly. But yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking and uh, playing around with some ideas with that. So here we go, it's all done, it's all finished, and it's all completed, and yeah, I'm really proud of it. I think it's turned out really well and really great. I can't wait to scan this in and put it up in places. Um, I think it's really, really cool. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think, if you'd like to see some more videos like this, if you'd like me to go over anything more, or if you'd like a really super long version of this video and want a much more slowed down version, I'll see what I can do. But as always, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time. Take care everyone, bye bye.